Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This video is going to cover why you should avoid copying compositions, item sets, some tactics, and of course the most common champion selections in professional level play. I'm making this video because I want to see less people mimicking professional play in a professional setting. And assuming because they the professionals play a certain champion or composition or this little strategy that it's overpowered or strong. I'll be covering this in a massive topic and mentioning all of the nuances of the subject and not in a one-dimensional conversation about it. I want you to listen without any biased nature as much as possible as this subject seems to be pretty touchy with many people but I think this will genuinely help players it's only to why I'm doing it. I'm not here to make a conversational subject I'm here to hopefully shed some light with logic and thought. Let's set this all aside and let's jump right in. Champions Maximum Limits First up, these professional players are using and sometimes abusing the literal maximum human limitations of a champion, of your ability to play them. These champions will not literally be as powerful in your hands. Professional players get more experience in levels in lane due to less downtime and also creates to more CSing in which they're nearly perfect at and of course the large increment of global gold due to more objectives being taken at this level. In addition, they know the maximum limits of a champion and seeing those openings a lot more easily than the average player. They know all of your ranges, cooldowns, mobilities, lockups, combos far better than the average player and sometimes it's theory crafted to a absolute T. Basically, these champions are not as strong as they would seem in your hands. Now that may seem obvious, but certain champions are exceedingly high skill cap and if you're not good in or not haven't got that kind of skill cap, the champion can be quite literal garbage. In a professional player's hands, they can be insane though. This is basically the main point. You ain't as good as a professional player. I could play AP Janna and beat you in mid lane. It doesn't matter because they have a lot more knowledge. I could give you a sword uh, and a secret ops soldier, nothing, and they would probably still beat you in a fight. Don't expect to play with these champions and meet the same strength. This is a very, very basic one. Now, of course, it's a quite a good example. They can show the limitations and I think it's great to see what you can pull off. You have to remember there's also another thing as well. It's also organized. These champions usually are complemented. Rumble, for example, is seen quite heavily. Rumble Jungle, for example, is a really good one, I felt. Very good in professional play, very good in high level play, but in Brawls and Silver, they're playing it not understanding the concept. Rumble requires a facilitate. He requires a Jarvan to lock people inside of his ultimate. He requires someone, a Sona, to lock them all down inside of his ultimate. If you don't have that, or a pick comp, or a lockdown comp, professionals organize compositions around something like a rumble. In normal, average solo queue play, it's just not going to happen. Lane counters and general counters. Now, this is another huge one. We also see champions destroying each other in lane and they may seem basically unstoppable. Now, if you see a champion dominating, this could just be a massive lane counter. I've seen people picking up new mains and not just, and not getting to hell how the champion is so weak. They tell me they've seen it at the LCS and they've shown me the game and I'm like, yo, that, that's a counter though, like, obviously. Also, sometimes certain champions are weak versus a Zed with uh, not too much single target protection, but you can play Zed. Not every game you're gonna find that general counter, of course, uh, but sometimes it can be a pretty big point. Sometimes champions are just played in specific scenarios to counter another and maybe forced, or certain champions are basically picked to counter a composition. So uh, in that previous example, a Janna could be picked versus a dive-based composition as a counter, and she could look very OP because she's a general counter versus that composition, but she may not be that powerful in general, which is the reason why everyone isn't picking her up. Certain champions in certain situations are more powerful because they're designed to counter those situations that can make them appear more powerful than they are. And the professionals understand this and are picking this only for this specific reason versus specific compositions or specific champions. Uh, generally, just picking them up for a normal circumstance isn't great. Functioning within a planned composition. This is a point I did uh, scratch on earlier. Some champions can look amazing in certain scenarios, but most of these scenarios are just made up by the composition. Uh, once again, I'll just go over again with the Rumble one because I just want to reiterate. The best example is Rumble. Rumble with a lockdown comp can single-handedly by himself do the most damage in the team and make a team fight. But this only works if your team creates a lockdown and your enemy also haven't picked anything around it. Champions can be amazing in the right comp and other times nearly unplayable. I personally hate Rumble, but I love him in team fives. And there's a very big difference there. This also works versus a certain enemy. Uh, if a Rumble is versus a mobile team, the chance of having a successful ultimate is nigh on impossible. 
champions that don't fit your playstyle. I'm actually going to make a video on how to find your playstyle in a little bit of time, but for now, let's cover this. People play champions that are straight up outside their way they normally play. I personally I love a kite caster playstyle. It's just my playstyle. It's the one I enjoy the most. So basically, if I, I use abilities with mainly casters. So I play a lot of Ezreal and Anivia. Uh, in the jungle, I play disruption playstyle. So I play tanks and bruisers. I don't play high risk junglers like Rengar. Uh, they're powerful, but obviously I'm just not an assassin player. I don't have that knack for it. But even if all of the pros played him, I, I, I still wouldn't play him. Even if he got buffed and he was really overpowered again, I, I wouldn't play him. Even if every professional player in every single game played him, I wouldn't play him because he's not my playstyle. And you kind of have to understand that sometimes you're out of your comfort zone. Team 5 champions in solo queue. Now, the biggest reason a lot of these champions only work in team 5s because is they've got an actual composition revolving around them. In solo queue, we've got five random people playing five random champions. And the chance of you getting a lockdown comp uh, and a weak laner versus a rumble is not 100%. The chance of playing a Vian and uh, your team picking a protection frontline comp is it's, it's not going to happen sometimes. In team fives, we have a team that will quite literally discuss if Vian is enough protection, if uh, we want to do a hyper carry composition. Uh, looks like they've went for a dive base comp. We don't like that tendency with the singular comp. Do we want to rotate it out to a kite comp? These are little things that go through your head in high level play, and you can't always get away with them. And it's just unfortunate. It's just the way solo queue works, you know? In team fives, we have a team that just discusses it. In solo play, it's not talked about at all. So sometimes you uh, very common solo queue scenario i'm playing a suo uh, okay um we've no knock up though i'm playing a suo no no we've we have we have no knock up and we've no front line can you can you not play your suo i'm playing your suo okay we're gonna lose Team Reliant Champions. Yet another big point many of these points collide together some champions rely on their teammates to do the right thing every time so let's use the previous example you suo you pick up your suo you need a team that will say, right, well, uh, this guy's picked you so cool. I'll pick up Alistair, I'll pick up Malphite. I'll, uh, I'll sort this out for you. I'll make I'll make your weakness on our comp fixed. In professional play, they, our team reliant champion is never in peril because you can pick up Yusuo anytime in professional play and they'll the team will obviously pick up knockup around him. 100% because they're, they're, they're a team in solo queue. It's, it's just... It's every man for himself, essentially. So doing this, I, I've done this before. I've picked some hyper carry and because we've no damage. And I'm like, please, please pick protection. And no one does it. You just lose the game off it. Filled compositions. Now, a point that works with all of the previous ones together. Professionals have a complete composition every single time. It is a designed, a theoretically designed composition. In solo queue, you're lucky to get one tank. Sometimes you might not have an assassin, too many casters, you might not have an AP. Professional players have a coach, a gameplay analysis, a theorist sometimes to ensure the compositions work together smoothly. Sometimes insta-picking that Zed to be the next faker is idiotic when your team it just doesn't have that AP. Picking up the gangplank top can be foolish if your team doesn't have a tank and you're lacking pick. Uh, selecting that Elise when you really need a hard tank in the jungle isn't always the best idea just because some professional play that made it look really strong. Insta-picking Braum every each time can be the worst thing to do versus some compositions. Basically your team needs a lot of holes in it and pro play this isn't an issue and solo queue it is you've got to pick and fill comps or just play what you play best. Trying to play this champion that doesn't fit and just trying to force it because you've seen someone better play it is a really silly way of doing it. You're not faker. Lastly, everyone tries to mimic some insane plays rather than slowly pushing out the limits. You should avoid trying to mimic next level players when you're not next level. Getting better at this game and focusing on your level of play, on your set of champions and improving upon it is core. People think I'm being an ass when I say this, but I feel it's the best way of improving is working on your own template, your own comfortable champions. Rather than going out of your comfort zone and playing Zed you just don't play, you just never had even any thought in because you like faker and see what he done with it. You have to build yourself up to that level. If you're playing that Zed and trying and feeling the next level plays, it's just going to make you worse. Work on the core of your game and avoid trying to jump into next level without the grind. The, the professionals just didn't jump into be pros. They played thousands, if not tens of thousands of games, practiced every game, theorized every game, were training against other fantastic players every day. You don't have that luxury. And they've got a full team around them who will support them with picks, compositions, and a multitude of other things. They didn't say to themselves, I'm just going to try and make plays every game. They had to grind to that minimalistic play style.
Now, if you're an experienced player, this doesn't really apply to you so much. It's the players with under a thousand games, I would say, I'm preaching to you, or even 500 games if you're good. Play the simple champions work and the small improvements and teaching yourself the game as a whole, not mimicking the best players in the world. Of course, seeing what is strong is important and admiring a really nice player is cool, but you should not be meaning Zed. You should not. You should be playing every champion once, testing every role, working on your CS, researching items, paths, masteries to fit your champion to improve. It's all about improvement. Copying the pros can be great to see the potential of a champion, but don't blindly do it unless you know why it's strong. And that's it for the video guys, I try to give a couple examples, a few logical ones and the main justifications to why picking certain champs and comps is just wrong whenever you don't understand them and how this is really really bad when people mimic professional play. Now I'm not saying uh, to never play a champion the pros are playing, just ensure you get a little thought into it and maybe even practice before going into ranked. I'm not hating anyone, this, this, this is just something I prefer we all did, we all play and focus on ourselves before mimicking the professionals. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it, if you like the content you can subscribe, if you think it's horrible and you think I'm totally wrong here you can unsub, I, uh, and you love double lift more than ever. You can, you can do, unsub it's time totally fair. Beyond that, guys, have a great day. Best luck in the rift, and hopefully, guys, I'll see you next time.